Hello, this is Siri and you're listening to my favorite podcast, Not Real Art. I live for this shit cause it's totally lit. Welcome to Not Real Art, the podcast, series' favorite creative culture podcast with your boy, Man One. And Sourdough in the house, sounding good as ever. Yeah, man, we're, uh, we're up in our game here. Yeah. We've got some new toys in the studio. Well, we have a new mic. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm worried about saying new toys in the studio. <laughs> That's... Well, for those audiophiles out there who actually give a shit... And uh, know anything about any of this stuff. Which, by the way, I'm not one of them. Me neither. I have no idea. I just know these things are new. I have no idea, like, how good this actually is. Yeah. But when I went to Guitar Center, and I said, I'm ready to up our game. You know, we started (laughs) on entry-level mics as a new podcast. But, you know, 40-some episodes in, you know, I'm feeling like, you know, now's the time to... (laughs) up our game you know we're still not making any money you know it's still you know it, we're still in the red yeah not that we ever thought we would make money with this damn thing and we're but, still amateurs and we're so amateurish <laughs> but i said you know what maybe you fake it till you make it maybe a good mic will make it sound even better than we are right, right. yeah because that's a trick right right sounding better than you actually are or looking better than you actually are you don't have to be a good driver to have a badass car <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I went into Guitar Center. I'm like, what do you what do you recommend? They're like, well, sir, Uh oh, there's clearly only one choice for you. <laughs> the uh, Shure SM7B is the one that uh, we recommend. Wow. And matter of fact, since there's two of you, we recommend that you buy two. There you go. So yeah. So, you know, lots of money later. <laughs> here we are. There you go. I mean, as... <laughs> I think these mics sound so good. I mean, you sound so good. I can even hear you in my deaf hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's how good these mics are. These it's mi- a miracle. These, these mics yeah. are miraculous. Yeah. Yeah. Miracle mics. Yeah. That's what, that's what they call these. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> um, Michael Jackson famous, famously used these mics. Michael Jackson? Yeah. Well, I hope it was in his uh, audio <laughs> recordings on the, at the studio well, that he was using them. Yeah. You know, I mean, they are... They are uh, you know, somewhat phallic looking. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they look cool. They definitely look cool. And, you know. This is some Joe Rogan shit. Is it? Yeah. This is, I mean, if you ever see him. Or yeah, even, yeah. You, you know, even who's the other popular. Uh, is this Howard Stern level? Howard I, Stern, yeah. I mean, so? this is pro level shit. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I had a meeting this morning at KCRW. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they had this shit. They had, they had this shit. Case okay, in the new studios, like the st- oh damn, yeah, top so, of the line, top of the line, man. If only we knew how to use them. Oh well, I think we have to char- start charging now. If people listen to us, uh, Patreon. Here we come. Here we come. Subscribe and pay your fifteen ninety nine introductory price <laughs> for not real art before it becomes forty dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah, well, year. if you if you subscribe today, yeah. we'll lock you in for a lifetime. Yeah. price. Like that's it. That's it. You know, non-transferable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. You know, get in early. It's like those Facebook, uh, you know, people who, who got into Facebook early. They got to get into not real art early. Dude, I mean, if they're, if they're smart, if they... When yeah. we go public, just wait. People are going to be crying, I should have invested. Yeah, you should have, yeah, motherfucker. You yeah, you should have. We tried to tell you. Go back to episode 45 <laughs> and listen <laughs> to what we told you. You should have yeah, done that. Yeah, yeah. And now that we're in episode 52... <laughs> yeah right 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 yeah no this is great man this is cool i'm i'm uh always excited to to see what the new technology is and i i just i've been well a of course you yeah. know me like i yeah. wanted to buy these when we started this damn of show course. seven yeah, months yeah, ago know. yeah you just needed a reason <laughs> you know a reason not to get kicked out of the house for buying stupid shit well 100 <laughs> percent. and uh i couldn't you know uh, much to my surprise i i demonstrated some re- restraint yeah, that day that's and right, yeah. chose to go with the entry level mics right was there an intermediate mic probably <laughs> i probably could have gone halfway but yeah. i had a, saw an opportunity to go all the way yeah and i'm a guy yeah i like to go all the way that's it that's how it is and uh yeah so you know 
I, I use them actually. Mm-hmm. You don't know this. No. Uh, I use them for the first time. Yeah, well, I bought them. What is today? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I bought them Tuesday. Okay. I used them yesterday <laughs> with a guest. Really? Yes, Who we had guest? a very interesting guest oh, yesterday. We, do, we can't talk about the guest yet. I think we can, because his episode will come out oh, I think, after, after this. Yes, right? Yeah. So who's the guest that I haven't listened to yet? <laughs> Does the name Jeff Tremaine mean anything to you? Jeff Tremaine? Jeff Tremaine. No, why? Why should it? Should it? It should maybe. Does the does the name Johnny Knoxville mean anything? Oh yeah, to you? that 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 does. Okay, so so the phrase Johnny Knoxville and Jeff Tremaine. Okay, does that start to paint a picture at all? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, Jeff was famously the creator of Jackass. Okay. The show. Yeah, yeah. The I, movies. I, I know the show very right, well. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, as it turns out, yeah. Jeff's son's Jeff's son Finch. Yeah. Is in my daughter's first grade class. Oh, cool. There you go. So I met Jeff, mm-hmm. you know, a few months ago. Yeah. Didn't know who he was. I mean, I did. He looked kind of familiar, but I didn't know why. And it didn't yeah. matter, you know, whatever. And we were just like, you know, chopping it up one afternoon, yeah. whatever. You know, what are you doing? Whatever. And he's like, oh, I'm just working on a movie. You know, blah blah blah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, right. like, what do you what are you working on? He's like, well, it's this you know thing for Netflix. It's like it's a biopic movie about Motley Crue. It's based on the book oh, by the dirt. It's called yeah, the, dirt the dirt from yeah, one. Yeah. Actually, right. I just saw Robert Vargas doing a a painting on Sunset at the Whiskey a Go Go for the dirt. Okay, well, shout there you out go. to Robert Vargas. That's right. So I'm talking to hmm. Jeff, and okay. I'm like, dude, that's fucking awesome. You're freaking doing the biopic for Molly Crew. You know, that's great. You yeah. know, congratulations. Like, how did you land that gig? Right. He's like, well, you know, I've done other projects, whatever, and done. I'm like, oh, cool. Well, you know, what else have you done? He's like, well, I'm probably most well known for creating jackass. I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm trying to be cool. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Little did I realize, like, the guy that I'm talking to has given me so much joy. <laughs> right. Just, yeah. I mean, how fucking much I laugh my ass off watching jackass. And his son is in my daughter's class. So there I said go. to him, of course, <laughs> you know, me not wasting an opportunity. Yeah. I'm like, hey, man, you know, like, you know, I know how busy you are. I know you got a lot of sure. know, big fish to fry, whatever. But, you know, I have this little podcast with my boy, Man One. Like, yeah. you know, how would you, maybe, you know, would you be interested in maybe coming, like, talking about your project sometime? He said, yeah. fuck yeah, it'd be great, you know? <laughs> so he was able to get over here yesterday. Oh, wow. Right? Cool. Well, just in time because the Motley Crue movie drops. Yeah. Drops uh, tomorrow. You're right. Actually, it's the it's 22nd. That's right. Yeah. And as a part of, you know, now, because now, right, we're, we're in the media. That's right. Oh, yeah. As a podcast, we're in the media. It's true. So yeah. I, I was able to say to Jeff, well, you know, yeah. in, in preparation for your, for yeah. your interview, like, yeah. it'd be great to maybe get a sneak peek of the, of the movie. He's like, of course. Oh. He's like, hell yeah, man. I'll just, you know, I'll get Netflix yeah. to send you a link, whatever. So, like, on Monday night, Tuesday or whatever, like, I get this link. And so I see the movie. Like, I watch yeah. The Dirt, you know, <laughs> in preparation for this thing. Yeah. And so, you know, so he shows up yesterday. He sat right in your chair. I Perfect. didn't think you would mind. Yeah. And so it was groovy, man. It was cool. Like we, <laughs> we wrapped for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Super chill dude. Nice. You know, like, you know, married now, a couple kids, definitely, you know, settling down. But right. I think he might have still been hung over from the Motley Crue pre- right. premiere movie on Monday on night. Monday night. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Right. Which yeah. it was at the whiskey. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. 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 That's, no. I seen it on uh, on the gram. So no. is he? He's the producer, director, director, director. Oh, okay, cool. Got it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I mean, can you fucking imagine? He was like, because we were talking about it, like, why did you even want to do this project? Yeah, right. I mean, you're doing a movie about Motley Crue. Yeah. Now, granted, the book was written by the crew. It's based on the book, so yeah, okay. You know, the source material was yeah on point, right, and approved, right. But I mean, there's so much you can get wrong. I mean, can you imagine trying to like, you know, <laughs> to, you know, sit down with Tommy Lee and like get notes from him about like, you know, oh man. And much to my surprise, you know, he was saying like those guys pretty much left him alone. Like, like they were as available to him as he wanted or needed them. Yeah. But they weren't trying to micromanage. Yeah. You know, uh, so they kind of let him do whatever he wanted to do. But then right. there were those moments where he like, you know, took screeners or took clips or whatever sure. like over or dailies over to them yeah and he's just he, he was talking about the first time he was like oh shit man i'm actually getting ready to show these guys this fucking shit you know what I mean? it's like 
he's probably like, did this actually happen? I just filmed this. I just shot this, but did this actually happen? Right, right, like, right. Gotta- and it was, it was funny too, because I was asking him about, you know, how did he get the movie, right? Because yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of directors that sure, wanted yeah. that project. And he's like, well, he goes, you know, I said, why did you want to do it? The whole thing. He's like, he's like, well, honestly, I wasn't even a huge Molly Crew fan. He's yeah. like, I, I totally yeah. dug them and respected them and liked some of their tunes. He's like, but I wasn't like a diehard. But when yeah. I read the book, he's like, what I realized was that the, their story resonated with me as a creator of Jackass because their business model was very similar to our business model, which is like, you're getting paid and you're incentivized to behave badly. Yeah, that's true. Right? Right. And so where does that go? Yeah. Right? Oh, and so the guys at Jackass dealt with many of the same personal issues as some of the guys in the crew did. Yeah. And so he felt like, you know, while not being a, like a diehard crew fan, he definitely got their story in a, in a personal way and wanted to, yeah. to take the chance at doing it. And, Makes uh, sense. and so, but he said he had to go pitch himself to the guys, you know, like why uh, he was the guy. Right. 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 And he's, <laughs> and it was a funny story because he was saying like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I figured, you know, Vince would be like the, you know, or maybe t- well, of course, uh, Nikki, Nikki six, Nikki six would be yeah. the hardest one. Right. Right. But then Tommy <laughs> would be like down, you yeah. know? And he said, it turns out he shows up. Tommy's like, what do you think you could do our movie? You know, like, who, who the fuck are you? You know? He's like, holy shit. You yeah. know, so he was like, you know, like, you know, like holding his ground, defending him and stuff. And then so he left the house and didn't know, like, <laughs> he how would go, that, whatever. Yeah. And he said he was like five minutes down the road. Tommy texts him, dude, this is going to be awesome. You're, you're our guy. I fucking love you. you know? That's rad. Yeah. yeah, man. So it was, uh, so, 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 so Jeff Tremaine yeah. got to use the mics before now I you. know who Jeff Tremaine is. Now you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh. Right on. So, you know, you got to make it. He was impressed. He's like, these are the nice mics. That's, that's what you're doing, really. You're just showing off. I, I you know, I kind of was. You're like, who do I know what? in this business that you know, I, I, would you, be impressed by these mics? By the way, <laughs> the Not Real Art brand is, 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 is world class, baby. It's, it's world class. You know, we got to, we got to represent. <laughs> and if it, if it boils down to the kind of mics we use. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I was scrambling, you know, like trying to get the damn thing set up before you like, I literally oh, yeah, got him like... working like two minutes before he showed up. <laughs> like, oh shit. Like everything else we do in Not Real Art. <laughs> That's right. Fly by the seat of our pants. That's why people love us. Yeah. You know, we're very, we're, we're very human. <laughs> Shout out human. <laughs> oh my God. We're not, we're not, you know, we're, we're not, we're not precious over here. Yeah. I think that's what people like us. They get, we're relatable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. That's true. We're relatable. Right. Well, we're here. We're doing something. Doing something. Yeah. yeah. How's your week been? Uh, my week has been good. Let's see. What the hell is this? Uh, yeah. I had a freaking amazing time yesterday. Um, was invited by my friend uh, Matteo from, from Italy, who is here doing a project at 72 and Sunny. And they invited me to come and talk to them. How'd that go? Fucking amazing. Are you kidding me? I was, I was there five hours. <laughs> I was there five hours. I thought it was gonna be like a one hour meeting. That's five hours meeting. later, I'm like, holy shit, this is cool. No, nah, I was like, you know, it was really, really great uh, project they're doing uh, over there at 72U. And so, yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know why I was really there, you know, but you know now you know now i know and um it's really really amazing so yeah that that was a that was a fun time and i got to see the big giant you know cause piece outside there and all the facilities and and um you know it's 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 interesting right to see all this like street art now and graffiti and murals and everything just like we saw this 20 years ago dude yeah yeah we we fucking knew that this shit was gonna happen oh we we fucking knew no one fucking listened no (laughs) But yeah, so it was cool. It was it was a really fun meeting, and um, hoping to um, have them over to the studio pretty soon and do that. So what's the what's the project? Oh, so yeah, so so they're doing they're doing something regarding um, homelessness in Los Angeles, okay. you know, and important coming up issue. with yeah, yeah, very important issue. And you know, they reached out because they knew I had done some some stuff in Skid Row. They knew about my gallery was that in Skid Row. <laughs> They, you know, they had just followed my work and as a native Angelino wanted to kind of not just pick my brain, but really get, um, a sense of, of, you know, as an artist also, like what, 
what has changed, what's going on down there, what's my story as it relates to that issue. And, you know, apparently I had a lot to say about it that, you know, sometimes I take for granted the things that I've been a part of or have done. And yeah, it's, uh, it was pretty cool. And so, so they, you know, that, that video that we shot at, uh, Von Jacko, shout out to Von Jacko. Shout out. That we did for the, for the actual, for the Not Real Art residency with uh, Shows Art. I showed them that and they freaking loved it. And they were like, this is like a series. Like, like we need to figure out how to make this into a series. So, um, yeah, it was just cool. It was just so much, so much stuff uh, to talk about. You know, Tracy over there was awesome. Native New Yorker. So, you know, it's always fun. Yeah, <laughs> you right, know, with right, people who are, right. <laughs> who are like that and I just, like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, in your face, but so loving, but, but so real and so right. raw. And everyone there. So it was just cool. It was just cool. And then, you know, I'm walking in and they show me like Chaz has a huge right. painting there that he did. And it's, it's, I don't know, 50 feet long or something, you know, really impressive piece. And it's like, wow, it's so cool that, that, you know, you know, people who have been doing it such a long time, finally getting the recognition and being, you know, in the, in the framework, literally of these creative, you know, places, you know? So, um, so that was cool. That was a great great uh, thing happened yesterday and then yeah i've just been doing you know i'm working on some portraits and some commissions doing uh yeah just doing more and more every day you know so now i'm figuring out um just got a text from one of my clients who wants me to fly over to japan and hong kong can i go next (laughs) i got nothing going on you can go you can go and no one's stopping you wait when are you going well, that's the thing. So he told me give him, to give him a date for next month. Just yesterday, he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna happen to be in Tokyo on the fourth and fifth. Should we meet there? Does that, does that work for you?" I'm like, "Oh shit!" I go, "Give me 24 hours at least to like think about it and make sure that I'm available." But yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's what's next, you know, because I have to go do research for the, my mural. You know, I can't, I can't just paint a mural about Japan and and Hong Kong without actually being there and. You know, garbage in, garbage out, man. You got to do your due diligence, your research. Come on. That's right. I know. I know. I just, you know, I don't like to put out phony shit, you know? And got to be real. He asked me. Authentic. He asked me, he's like, have you ever been to Hong Kong? I'm like, nope. Like, sounds like you got to go. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You definitely need uh, an assistant. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, right. I'll, ca- I'll carry your fucking brushes or whatever <laughs> they got to do. Like, My your, tripod. Your, your, yeah. So I can take photos. Right. <laughs> That's basically all I'm going to do is just take a bunch of photos, which reminds me, I got to. Speaking of tech, I got to buy a badass camera because I don't have a badass camera. What are you going to get? Um, I think I'm going to get a Sony. Jacko actually told me about this Sony that he has that's, that he loves. And, you know, it's nice. It's a good size. It's, mm-hmm. not, it's not like a giant camera. So I'm looking into that kind of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I definitely got to get, get some, some good flicks so I'm out there and, you know, work on my, my photographer chops. <laughs> Well, everybody's a photographer now, right? Oh, yeah. Of course. You know. Ooh. Yeah. I've been a photographer before there was cameras. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think my first camera was one of those, like... I-10. Can- no, 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 no. No? The candy... No, no. My first, oh. my first, first camera... Oh, okay, okay. ...was, like, one of those candy bar plastic cameras. I'm, th- I'm, th- I'm thinking... I'm talking about 1977. Okay. Right? Yeah. Think back, Yeah, right? okay. That's right. And... You, they used to have these cameras yeah. that you would put the film in and the film looked like it was like a flat thing with two rolls on yeah. the end, yeah. right? And you put them in and, and so the camera itself it, it was kind on of- on the top like this and then you, you, you put it on the top and then, and then you, right? As I recall, the back of this, because it was, it was long, it was like rectangular yeah. and it was about right. an inch thick. And the back would pop down and oh, the it would? film would slide in there. Mm. And then the viewfinder was this, you know, yeah. little thing. And there was a flash in there. Yeah. And you would, it would go chink. And, yeah. you know, you would take this photo. And which camera was that? I mean, you know, like there was, it was like Kodak made. Um, yeah. Like, but, it, but it was an I-10 camera. That's what I remember it. Oh, I got a Google. The 110. I, it was I a gotta, 110 camera. Okay, maybe that's it. I, I Let me Google this shit. Hold on. Yeah, it was like super thin and it had the ends. Wow, the, if you remember the actual fucking name. The 110 camera. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh. <laughs> that's what I, that was my first camera. And it had like, I forgot, like 18 exposures or something. 
We, on, I think I got to put vintage in here. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah. So since uh, this, yeah, <laughs> for our listeners, sourdough is googling one ten camera because oh, we Dude, can't we can't afford an assistant. It. You fucking nailed it. it. This is it, right? Is, it? This, is this the one you're talking about? Shit, you nailed it. That's right. That's the one. It's the one ten. The one ten. That was my first camera too. That was my first camera. Yeah. And so the thing is when. And I used that camera all the way. I mean, you know, when I started doing graffiti, I had the 110 camera. Right. And the thing was, I, I forget. Did I say how much expo- how many exposures you could you had? Because I I want to say it was, it was like, like 12 or something. Yeah, right? it was something like 18 yeah, or 12, like 12 or something. 24 or 18 and 36, something weird like that. It was that. something, and and yeah. I remember that you know. So let's say if it was 18, Dude, right? You could, I think you could still buy this fucking thing. No like way. this. <laughs> of course, 999 film camera. To, wow okay i didn't even know you could get film for this thing anyway go ahead i'm sorry and so and so i would take a photo of one of my pieces yeah right? yeah but you know i only had 18 you know photos to take right right so you just hoped that that <laughs> that, that one snap yes, of that piece yes. wasn't blurry right or it wasn't fucked up you right, know right because you know you're not gonna take two pictures of the same thing. Right, like, are you right, kidding me? Right, right, Who does that? Yeah. How stupid is that? Right. <laughs> Nowadays, people take like a million photos of one thing. You know, dude, I am the worst at that. Like literally, because what I do is I just snap. Yeah. You know, five ten images. Right. Of the same thing yeah. because I know one of them is gonna be gold. <laughs> right? right. One of them. One of them. Yeah. But yeah, I end up with like eight or nine pieces of shit. Yeah. But the problem is, I never. You don't edit. I, I never edit. Yeah. So my, not. I have my. my I have, like a million photos. Oh my god, it's the worst. The cloud. <laughs> the cloud. Oh, your cloud. It's a polluted. Yeah. It's a polluted place, man. <laughs> this cloud that we talk about. Yeah, p- pollu- polluted cloud. Oh man, and I remember sometimes, um, you would take photos and then get double exposure, right? All the time. Totally right. So I would have so like, cool. a, I would like yeah. a, you'd be pissed, but it'd be cool. <laughs> be, yeah. And, and I have like a photo of like some graffiti, like with like a, a picture of like one of my friend's faces over it or something, you know, and you'd be like, <laughs> what the fuck, you know? And um, the other thing is crazy talking about all this stuff is that like the each shot to me was so precious. Like you wouldn't just take a picture of anything, like unless it meant something, you know, like I never thought of like, hang, I'm, I'm hanging with my friends. You know, let's just take some some candid shots of us hanging out. Like, no, that's stupid. Why would you do that? Right, you know? <laughs> right, right. And so nowadays, like, I see people posting pics from yeah. the 80s or whatever, and, like, they're painting at a yard, you know? Right. And they have photos of them painting. Right. And I'm like, dude, that guy was fucking brilliant, you know? Right, right. Because none of us thought of taking photos of each other while we're painting. Right. When we were 16. That's, that's history right there. Dude, that guy captured history just yeah, because yeah. He, he turned the camera before anyone was done painting. Right. And took photos of his friends. Yes. Like that guy's fucking see smart. That. So that's why you're not a photographer. That's why no. you're a painter. Yeah. That's what happens. It's like shit. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, well, it's funny because my wife's family, for whatever reason, didn't have a camera or, or yeah. didn't often have a camera or whatever. So her life growing up isn't, and her and her sister, yeah. uh, it's not that well documented. Of course. Right? Yeah. In terms yeah, of, yeah, right? right. For whatever reason, uh, my parents had a camera and were quite you know liberal in their use of it Mm -hmm. so there are a lot of photos of us growing up right and but i got interested in photography early on so i got my first i remember saving up it was a kmart (laughs) i I, I was like dad i want a camera he's like well you're gonna have to save up your money and go buy one you know so i'm like well you know can we Go put one on layaway or something, you know, like, you know, whatever. So he takes me to Kmart. Right. Yeah. In uh, Miller, Indiana, just adjacent to Gary. Yeah. And, and this Kmart, cause this was in Kmart's heyday, right? This is like yeah. 79, sure. probably 1980 or something. Yeah. And, uh, and I went and I put down a Yashica. I, I, I picked a Yashica. Yashica. I, mean, I don't remember the model number, but it was a 35 millimeter. It was a, you know, yeah. this Japanese brand yeah. Yashica. It's a 35 millimeter. It was a fixed lens. Like you couldn't take lenses off. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, you know, I want to say it was like 70 bucks or something. Probably, you yeah, know, it was probably. like a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. Oh, it's like, like three month layaway. Yeah. 
And, you know, I would go and I would put like five bucks down or whatever, <laughs> exactly. you know what I mean? And then like, you know, many weeks later, right. got this thing out, you know? And yeah. so I started taking photos with that camera. And I, again, I don't remember, I, you know, I'm just 10 or 11 or whatever. But so then my life, so like you see all those albums to your left. I just did. Yeah. yeah that's, those that. are all my photos Wow, from like 1980 until <laughs> whenever. <laughs> And in fact, yeah. uh, you know, at some point along the way, I, st I just stopped carrying the camera because I just got tired of it. Right. So I think probably about tw uh, 90, I was like 24, 25 or something, right. I stopped like carrying a camera. Huh. And then it was until, really until the smartphone came out yeah. that I started like taking more photos again. Right. So, you know, it was about a 10 year period where there's like total blackout. Yeah. Which is probably a good thing because I think I was blacked out most of those 10 years. I mean, some of these photos, I don't know how I'm going to justify to my kids. You know, I don't think there's a whole lot of incriminating stuff in there, but there's some incriminating stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny part is, so, you know, you, you take all these photos, right? And then you had to get them developed. So we'd go to the little, little photo mat. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. The little drive through Yeah. Photo mat. If you guys went around the 80s, you don't know about the photo mat. And it was like a little tiny, like a, like a one room. Like a shed in it was a parking a shed lot. <laughs> in the middle of a parking lot. Literally a shed. And it was what, blue and yellow or whatever? Or, yeah. Right? Yeah. It wasn't much bigger than some of these ATM machines that yeah. you see in parking lots now that you pull up to. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. It was tiny. Yeah. It was one little, one, one little window, one little guy, right. one person sitting That's there, right. right? That's right. And so stocked we- Stocked with film. Stocked with film. And so we go there, right? And because, and you know, being a graffiti writer, we would rack everything, right? Yeah. And so, and for those, uh, those uh, uneducated, <laughs> uninitiated rack is a code for steal <laughs> for borrowing, <laughs> and borrowing, for borrowing. Right. Right. Sorry. Borrowing. Yeah. Yes. And so, uh, we would rack film, yeah. right? It's yeah. easy to rack film yeah. because no one, you know, right. no one thought about it back then. So we'd rack, you know, all kinds of film, but you could, you had to develop it. Like there's no way around the right. developing. Right? right. 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 So I remember we'd go to the same photo mat, like all the time, cause that was our neighborhood photo mat. Mm -hmm. and the the guy behind there, like you know, he 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 saw all the pictures. He saw everything that was coming back, and so he would see. He would look at you and be like, "You guys are doing some shit that you're not supposed to be doing." But I'm gonna pretend that I didn't see these pictures, and here you go, you know. And right. you, and like it's like you never talked to him. He never. He but never. I, said but I have a anything. question. I mean, how are you? I I kind of can. I I mean, I've heard you talk about racking paint, and I know how you guys pulled that shit up. But yeah. like. But film, as I recall, film was often behind the counter. Not everywhere. You? Okay. Not everywhere. You had to know where to go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was you had your spots. Yeah, you had your spots, just like paint, you know? You had your spots. But, you know, I mean, there was people that I knew that racked cologne. Like, do you know about this? <laughs> How bad do you have to s smell to rack cologne? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. This, I knew a bunch of guys, mostly graffiti writers, right, who would make a living racking cologne make a living like they didn't have a part-time job they just racked cologne because when you go to the when you go to downtown you know back then was the alleys and yeah all these little places where you could buy cologne yeah for like sure. you know but if, santee alley or something is yeah, that yeah, what we're down there in the alleys yeah. or, or or the just anywhere downtown where they they would sell this like all these knockoffs right yeah so you would go buy like you know uh whatever cologne guest cologne or i don't even know what the fucking cologne's names are anymore but right you'd be like oh I'm not going to buy that shit. That shit's a knockoff. No, they're not. They weren't knockoffs. Those were actual, like real colognes, mm -hmm. right? Brand yeah. name colognes. Yeah. But what happened is there was a whole underground, you know, way of, of, uh, of a business going on back then, you know, the black market. Right, right. And so a lot of my friends who were writers to make money, they would go rack colognes because they would get like, I forgot how much they would get like 10 bucks or 20 bucks per cologne bottle sure, and certain ones are even more. Right. So they would, they would figure out a way because the colognes were inside the cases inside these stores, like, yeah. you know, Rite Aid or CVS yeah. or whatever these markets were. And they would figure out ways to get skeleton keys made. And when, when no one was looking, they would open up the fricking case. Right. Cause you could open up the case from the outside because right. it was locked. Yeah. So no one cared. Because they were like, oh, no one has the key. Well, right. these guys had the key. And they would open up the fucking case and rack the entire shelf. So with one rack, they could make 
probably about 500 bucks, you know? Well, you said make a living. They make, make, a, make living. a living. They did. And I know guys who did it for years. And so they would go, they would go downtown and resell it, you know, to the fucking black market and sell these colognes. And that's how they made money. And they make tons of money. And so a, a, a lot of guys that I know that did that ended up getting busted for stealing instead of for graffiti. Because that's the thing that, that, that got them, you know, got them busted. So, but, it, but, but that would, you know, the, that racking was basically to, to fund their graffiti habit, you know? Right. So they would, they would in turn, you know, be able to buy shit for graffiti or the, whatever. The level of ingenuity and, and, and creativity, <laughs> right. In yeah. terms of like hacking, like the system or whatever, <laughs> you know, in the name of art or name of just eating, <laughs> you know, like it's just, I mean, it's awe inspiring. It's like, like these people should have grown up to be, you know, like billionaires because th that level right. of ambition and, and creativity and what have you, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of unheard of, you know, it's like some of these problems, I don't know. It's like some of these, you know, geniuses, evil, yeah. corrupt geniuses that, you know, I don't know, hack systems and, you know, counterfeit this and plagiarize that or whatever. It's like, yeah. they're brilliant. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm that's not one of those. I'm not brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I, I get just getting back to the story about the developing the film. I mean, you had to pay for the film getting developed. And I remember, I forgot what it was, but it was like three bucks or something. To, but I, I, I do to, want to stay on this cologne thing. Oh, okay. Because I, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, did, right. did, 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 were you a, were you a client? Were you buying cologne from these guys? No. And Are I, you a cologne guy? No, I'm not a cologne guy. Okay. Well, I know you're not now, but what were you then? Uh, I feel like a yeah, lot, of, a lot yeah. of dudes go through a cologne phase. Yeah, I, I know so. I went through my cologne phase. I think, I think, you know, I think in high school, maybe, right. You know, I think mine was definitely what, what, high school. What, what, yeah. Yeah. Cause it was once, once you're into girls, right. Right. Then all of a sudden, Oh, you got to smell good. And, yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah. but you know, you don't know what the hell smells good. So the girls tell yeah, you what smells Lauren good. Does. Right. No, but usually, usually it was a girl that gave you the cologne or you know, something like that. Um, I, I don't remember going out and buying cologne. Right. I remember it as a gift or as yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, you should wear this, you know, yeah. oh, you'll smell good in this. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, wear now, it. somehow, <laughs> some way, I do remember I got a, I got hooked on Polo by Ralph Lauren. Polo, yeah. I think everyone Polo. did. Everybody, everybody right? Did. I mean, that was my jam. <laughs> like, I think for like, my, I think it was a Polo for a long time. And then I was which was like the, a Dakar guy. Which Dakar was the guy. one that was like shaped like a microphone? Do you remember that one? Oh shit! It, it, it was yes, like a, it was uh, like, Pierre Cardin. It was Pierre Cardin. Ah! <laughs> I can't believe I remember that shit. But that's oh right. My, God. my dad used to wear that shit. Oh, shit. That's why I remember it. Yeah, it was like a microphone. It's like, is this a microphone <laughs> yeah. or a sex toy? I don't know. I think it could be either. Yeah. Not that I know what a sex oh, toy. Oh man! Is. Speaking of sex toys, like, I remember. So, like, this is a true story. Oh no! 1977, 76 or whatever. Yeah. And right? I'm six or seven years old. Yeah. And I'm helping my dad clean out his dresser. Like he, you know, it was like, yeah, you know how dads have like their junk drawers or whatever. Right. You know what? You know, I don't even know, but like I was helping him like clean out his stuff. And you know, I was just so happy to be hanging out with my dad. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, he hands me like, he's like, well, here, you know, clean, you know, take this, hands me a box. Like here, take, take the stuff out of the box. whatever. So I pull out this thing. I'm like, Oh, here you go, Dad. What what's this? what's this? And of course, I have no clue right. what it is, but it looks interesting. Yeah. And I looks say, like fun. To, and I say, I, I say to him, "What's this?" He he goes, "Oh, that's my back massager." And he takes it from me. Of course, it's my mom's vibrator. <laughs> you know? oh, I, years shit. later, I would yeah. realize yeah. that no, that was that was their sex toy. God, I hope it was clean. <laughs> And I don't remember, I don't remember if it was clean or not. I, I don't remember any pubes being on it, but it could have been, I mean, you know, I didn't know what a vibrator was. Would I be looking for pubes? Oh man. You know? But I, I, I can only imagine my dad who's like, oh shit, I handed him the wrong box. And this is a seriously Christian family you come from. My yes. Yes. God fearing <laughs> sex addicts. Apparently. Could you imagine if they weren't so Christian? Well, hmm. I, in my experience, Christians uh, the other way around. Some pretty dirty fucking sex. Yeah, the more Christian, the more, the more repressed, the more twisted. Yeah, the more I repressed. Can see that. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what you're it right. is. Man. Actually, you're right. They, they just feel really guilty about they feel it. Guilty about it. Yeah, that's yeah. the difference. <laughs> like, oh God, forgive me because I took it in the ass and liked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know. mm. <laughs> From Cologne to. Yeah, well, look, I mean, I hope my parents got it on hot and heavy. I mean, you know, like, you know, I know, I know, it's like I. I It'd make me sad to think that my dad couldn't give it to my mom the way she deserves it. You know what I mean? You want to think, you know what? When you were conceived, it was a fucking powerful moment. God damn. I mean, right? when I was conceived, I mean, I tell you, if my dad wasn't fucking the hell out of my mom, I'd, <laughs> I, I'd be really embarrassed and sad, disappointed. But you know what? I think he was. Because you know what? <laughs> Look at me. You know me. You know how I am. Yeah. Would a guy like me be conceived with a lazy ass fuck? <laughs> No, a guy uh, like me was probably yeah. created, you know, when my dad <laughs> fucked the hell out of my mom, you know, probably, I hope it was, oh God, it had to be doggy stuff, you know, like a missionary. I mean, you know, could've, classic could've missionary position. Yeah. Like, I don't think, I don't, th- I don't see that. You don't see that. Yeah. You know? Maybe reverse cowgirl. I hope my, my mom was like, <laughs> maybe if my dad was lucky, my yeah. mom was doing the reverse cowgirl. <laughs> When it happened? When I was conceived. Because yeah. that's my favorite position. Right. Maybe that's what it was. Reverse cowgirl is my favorite position. <laughs> and because that's the way my mom was fucking my dad when I was conceived. <laughs> as long as you're not the reverse cowgirl. <laughs> then it's okay. I remember a friend of mine telling me a long time ago a story about he got, I don't know what he was doing. He thought it would be maybe, Maybe, maybe the story is bullshit, but it seemed real at the time. But somehow, <laughs> some way, he was hiding under his parents' bed and fell asleep. And they didn't know he was under there. And he woke oh, up wow. and they were fucking. Oh, wow. And the punchline of the joke was, says, he's like, yeah, he says, I didn't know if I should kill my dad or save my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, man. Does it, does it, uh, you know, some people get weirded out thinking about their parents fucking. Does it get, does it weird you out thinking about your parents fucking? Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I don't want to think about that shit. <laughs> Kidding me? <laughs> well, hey, you know, teach it. I don't get weirded out thinking about your parents fucking. I think, I, I think, I think I heard him go at it one time. Oh, interesting. And, and I tried so hard to forget that day. <laughs> I tried everything to pretend that that wasn't it and <laughs> and that that was not what I was listening to and please let it be something else. Please let it be something else. <laughs> but it was not something else. It was not man, something I'm else. telling you. <laughs> yeah. So I hate to break it to you but <laughs> they were going at it. Yeah, oh, I know they were. <laughs> I know they were, you know. It's, oh jeez. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There you go. It's it's, it's a wild world out there. Yeah. It's just a, let that sink in. I want our I want our listeners just let that sink in. The image of my mom, my dad, <laughs> going at it. Maybe I'll post a photo on the blog and get more visual. Right. Uh, oh man. To this day, yeah. when my parents come to visit, they refuse. My dad specifically, yeah, refuses to stay at our house. Oh, he so, always ins- well. Let me rephrase. Yeah, that. my dad insists on staying in a hotel. Yeah, you know why. Yes, because apparently my mom is more relaxed in a hotel. Oh. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, I guess for my mom, hotel rooms are panty droppers. I mean, yeah. who would have known? Hey, <laughs> go dad. <laughs> Any excuse yeah. to get into a hotel. Well, he knows she can't get good. knocked up anymore. Right. That's the best. So that's that's a relief. Yeah. Yeah. After me and my sister, he's done. He's like. No more. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. There you have it. More information than we needed about. <laughs> hey, it's not real art, man. You know, this yeah. is this is uh this is how we roll over here, talking about anything and everything. <laughs> you know, it was funny. I you know, when yesterday when Jeff was on the show, yeah, he, you know, he hadn't heard the podcast, of course, so I was trying to explain it to him. Right. And I said I said something about, well, you know, you know, we're we're trying to talk about have real talk about art and culture and creative culture and Mm -hmm. the scene and, you know, enough of this pretension, enough of this, you know, fucking attitude, what have you like, 
you know, for us, it's, it's, it's all about, you know, being irreverent and being provocative and being, and so I'm saying this and then I realize who I'm talking to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the yeah. fuck am I even saying? Like <laughs> for, for Jeff Tremaine, creator of Jackass, the words yeah. irreverent right. and, right. and, and, you know, provocative. Yeah. Like, right. what am I even talking about? Like, he doesn't even, you know, and <laughs> Our level of being provocative or, or irreverent, yeah. I mean, for him, that's like going to church. You know what I mean? Like, I, I haven't, I like haven't, they, they had a we don't the, drink a <laughs> horse cum on this show. <laughs> yeah. Like an ongoing, uh, ongoing gag in there, just kicking each other in the balls <laughs> for no reason. I mean, I, I just, just for... Just to prep for the show a little bit, I thought yeah. I'd watch oh, yeah. so a couple old episodes yeah. of Jackass. Yeah. I mean, they got a <laughs> horse off. Yeah. Made a horse come, <laughs> and then one of them drank it. Oh. Steve O fucking drank it. Yeah, Steve O. Yeah. I yeah. was like, that's some crazy motherfucker. <laughs> we're yeah. not that crazy. No, we're, we're, no, we're just not real <laughs> art. We're not crazy. <laughs> it's two different things. Oh my god! It's two completely different things, but yeah, we're not on that level. Shout out! <laughs> Were you a crew fan, Molly Crew? Uh, hell no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was. I was not into rock. I was not into heavy metal at all. I was a hip hopper, yep. and I had a lot of friends who were rockers and stuff. There was a point though that was very weird in L.A. I don't know if it happened in other cities, but in L.A. there was a point in the late '80s where hip hoppers and like metal 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 dudes mm -hmm. dressed the same like you tell like there was a point where if you were a rocker or if you're a hip hop guy you were wearing like tight jeans tennis shoes you know whatever t-shirt whatever and long hair yeah you know and it was kind of like it was more of like i guess less, less of a of a hip hop thing Back then, it was, everything was different, right? It was just starting out. So it was more like a disco, disco ele electro funk, which is like, yeah, which is not necessarily what you think of as hip hop. But in LA, there was bands like Egyptian Lover and, you know, things like that, and that, that were, or like, you know, even like Soul Sonic Force or stuff like that was considered like funk, yeah. you know, and, or techno funk. And so, yeah, so, so there was friends of mine at high school. And, you know, we kind of dressed the same at that, in that moment, you know, we had the tight jeans and the, and the sneakers and the long hair, but he was into fucking metal and I was into fucking, you know, this hip hop shit, you know, or disco mm -hmm. techno funk, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. And so it was, it was, it was kind of a weird moment, you know? Right. Sure. Obviously, um, sometimes the rocker hair was a little bit different, a little bit more there was a lot of hairspray going on back then and stuff like that. It was the that. 80s. Yeah, it was the 80s. So, um, but yeah, I was never really a fan of, of um, you know, all those bands until later. Uh, they, they were always in my, I went to an all boys um, Catholic school and it was like 15% Latino. Right. So 85% of the white boys listen to white boy music. Sure. That's what we called it. <laughs> Oh, of course. Well, did that, so what were those bands then? Yeah, I mean, you can recall the white white boy bands. It was, bands. It was, like, it was they? well, there was, was like Kiss and yeah. So there Molly was like Crew there was like a lot of like your 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 heavy metal yeah. and your and your metal guys, and then there was some punks, right? There, and then there was your your um you know fucking um what are those guys um uh, like New Order and oh, Depeche yeah, yeah, Mode yeah, like and that all that British, shit. Uh, rock yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. So like there was that you know um. So, you know, that's kind of like what, what, what I heard in the background. Yeah. Were you a Van Halen fan? No, I, I, yeah. not, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, like these were all, this was all genres of music that I was aware of. Right. Obviously. It's not into. MTV. Yeah. Right. Like you, you couldn't, you couldn't not watch MTV. Right. And, and not see Van Halen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. But would I, would I go by their album? No. no. Right. Would I go to their concert? No. But you weren't seeing many of your bands. Uh, until what what yo mtv raps or whatever like when did hip-hop yeah. really come on mtv was it yo mtv raps that really brought hip-hop yeah. to mtv and so what because i'm guessing is mtv was as i recall mostly white bands yeah 
and white artists. So right. you probably were pissed off with it in at MTV. The no, first we, we, I didn't care about MTV yeah. showing hip hop because yeah. like to me, it was hip hop was like the real shit that was going on. Yeah, right, and MTV right. was like a TV station. Yeah, it was right, like a, right, right. The commercial, the shit. commercial shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, if, you know, and we watched that too. Cause you know, there's right. Michael Jackson. Well, and it's better than Prince the fucking and, evening news. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, but we had our own like LA, like hip hop shows <sighs> on like, you know, uh, uh, local networks and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, trying to remember some of these shows, but so like KCET or something would have something. No, there was a channel was KDLC, like local access. Like a local access. Yeah, okay. There was like, there was this illegal interns was this TV show that these guys I knew used illegal to, interns. Illegal I interns. I love that name. And, uh, they used to show all kinds of stuff. And then, so there was some, some local yeah. programming that was more hip hop than what was going on nationally. But. I don't know. It's not like I got pissed off at it or nothing right. like that. But um, but yeah, when Yo MTV Raps came out, came came out, that was cool. Like we we all loved watching that. Yeah. Because you know, obviously, that started showing a new light to what was going on. Right. You know, in, internationally, really. But yeah, it was just it was just a weird time. But so so all so it's funny because later on when I got into college, my my taste in music got way more diverse. Right. You know, I started listening to more bands different genres of music and all that stuff. I wasn't just so like hardcore hip hop yeah. like I used to be. And then it was okay to like other bands and stuff like that. So so all these bands and music that I listened to growing up that I rejected, now all of a sudden I was cool with it. Like, oh, right. cool. I'll listen to some Van Halen now. Right. I'll listen to some The Police yeah. or whatever, you know? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's so interesting to think about, you know, our histories and like how we, you know, discover music or culture or whatever, because obviously I didn't have any exposure to hip hop. Yeah. Right. Um, I was definitely a rocker. Yeah. Van Halen was, you know, probably Mm -hmm. my favorite band growing up. Yeah. But what was interesting was I was a, because I studied, played alto saxophone and studied music pretty intensely for many years. I was actually a pretty, pretty big fan. I was actually fanatical about jazz music. Mm. So I was like hip to Miles Davis and John Coltrane and Sonny Rollins and, you know, Thelonious Monk and, you know, so in, in the blues guys, you know, being from Chicago, right. You know, Muddy Waters, uh, Buddy Guy, you know, you name it. Right. Right. So my exposure to quote unquote black music was very much rooted in jazz and blues. Uh, Right. Right. And then, and rock. Yeah. Right. So when hip hop came out, like I felt like that wasn't me because Mm -hmm. like I knew that was contemporary and that was youth. Yeah. And that was how kids grew up, but that wasn't me. So like if I started to listen to hip hop, I kind of felt like a poser. It was like, like, okay, I can't, I mean, I dig it, but like I can't authentically be a fan. People are just going to think I'm a poser or whatever. It's not your music. It's not my music. And, um, and it was you know, it was a couple of years before I started feeling like getting into it mm-hmm. and really appreciating <clears throat> it and enjoying it and could figure out how I could enjoy it on my own terms. Right. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was an interesting thing. And then but then rock music mm-hmm. took a turn because I mean, yeah, the Van Halen I grew up with and the and the right. a lot of the music that I appreciated, white music that I appreciated was in the certainly in the 80s was celebratory was party music was right. fun yeah you know and then suddenly with grunge coming on in seattle yeah it started turning like super dark and like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know people are pissed off and like the party was over <laughs> like all of a sudden like all these white guys are just pissed off and doing fucking <laughs> heroin and you know are not into apparently fucking chicks and you know what i mean it's like what happened to the f- we were just having fun five minutes ago and now we're like want to kill ourselves like i did so you know but yeah. then but it was incredibly emotional heartfelt music i mean i was into you know Soundgarden, and pearl jam and nirvana and those guys but i mean i was you know i was not a core fan i mean yeah so many of my friends that were into nirvana you know, from the early days, yeah. I mean, they were pissed off when Nirvana got popular because they felt like yeah, yeah. they sold out or whatever. But I thought like bands like Red Hot Chili Peppers right. were an interesting kind of cross section because mm-hmm. they were still fun. They sang poetry and they sang like about some like smart stuff. Yeah. It, they weren't like 
talking about killing themselves. It's so funny because Red Hot Chili Peppers, <clears throat> I like them too. They, um, I saw like uh, the way they describe themselves, like what kind of music they do. Yeah. And they, they consider themselves a rap band, you know, and with, and they have all these other, you yeah. know, uh, um, things that go along with it, but, but they literally ex consider themselves a rap band. Hmm. And that was interesting because I was like, I never thought of them as a rap band, right? right? And then obviously when you listen to their, to their songs, their lyrics, like it is, they pretty much do sing in lyric and all right, I could see where the influence of rap is mm -hmm. in that, but I would never call them a rap band, you know? Right. But it's funny how, um, like you were saying about how you were into like Thelonious Monk and all like, I, I wouldn't have known about Thelonious Monk if it wasn't for hip hop. Right. I wouldn't have known about uh, John Coltrane if it wasn't right. for hip hop. Yep. You know, like so many of the, uh, of like these, all, all these other types of music musicians that were before my time and, and all that and jazz and funk and rock and whatever, I only heard for the first time because they were sampled in hip hop. Right. And then that turned me on to like, oh, what's this sample? It's interesting. And right. then you'd find out where the source was and then, then listen to more of that music. You know, because when I grew up, my, my parents were, you know, they're from Mexico, so all the music I listened to growing up was like Mexican music and Spanish, you know? And anything I heard was on the radio, right? And so it wasn't until hip hop that there was a third source. Now it was, it was either stuff I heard at home, stuff I heard on the radio, and then stuff that DJs were playing. Right. And all of a sudden the DJ stuff became really like, wow, where, where's this guy getting this, this song? I've never heard this song in my life. Like, where, what's this 12 inch he's got? What's cuts, this? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and that became really interesting, you know? And like I told, I mean, I said it maybe one or few, one or two times before, but you know, I wanted to be a DJ at one point because right. of that, you know? Like I thought that that's what I want to do. I want to like just, you know, discover new music and, and, play and scratch and do all that shit. I just found it so, so interesting at the time, you know? What artists were sort of, you know, re-energized because of sampling? I mean, like, George Clinton had to be one of them, Oh, George, right? if, like, number if, one. If, there was, if there was no James Brown, there would be no hip-hop. If there was no George Clinton, there'd be no hip-hop. Right. <laughs> you know, there's like a few, like, guys, you know, but there was, like, bands, you know, I mean, you know, you're talking about, like, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right. You're talking about, like, I mean, so many. I mean, I, 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 you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of bands now that, that when they play their, the, you know, the original song, mm -hmm. like there's probably people that had never heard the original song. Right, right. I don't just, like this song. Yeah. I don't like this version. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's like, no, that was the original version, you know? Right. But yeah, I mean, yeah, hip hop. Has there ever been a game show, like name that sample? Oh um, yeah. That's no, not, not necessarily. That was named. Like, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Where'd this come from? You know? I don't know. But you know, in um, in hip hop, maybe not so much now because everything's fucking bullshit. But when hip hop was Dude, in, what its, are you talking in about? its heyday, everything now is bullshit. Like yeah, everything now, like, is bullshit. this is like the golden age of hip hop. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, <laughs> whatever. When it really was the golden age of hip hop, there was a whole thing where people were like, if there was a break beat or if there was a, a sample, right? You didn't tell people where you got it from. You know, right. the DJs didn't say like... That was proprietary. Oh, dude, that was, you know, yeah. fuck, you, if you don't know, right. you don't know. Right, right. And if you do know, you don't let people know. Right. Because it's just our secret. That's your secret sauce. Yeah. Yeah. But then all of a sudden it became, it was this, this whole thing where people started like like saying like, oh, so-and-so cut, you know, from, from that album and this and that, right? And uh, DJ Premier says that on, on one of his albums. He's like, he's like, y'all violating shit. He says, you know, <laughs> he's like... Because that's what he's talking about. Because people used to, all of a sudden, DJs were like, oh, yeah, he got that sample from here. And, you well, know. So I don't know where I saw this. You know, Nef well, Netflix has had some interesting, like, hip hop history kinds of documentaries where they talk to different MCs, talking to different producers and stuff. And so maybe it was on one of these that I talked that, that they were talking about some of these, like, record sales that, like, people would, like, DJs and producers, like, would bring records and, other DJs and producers would come to like mm -hmm. buy those records. And that was where they got their source material. It was mm -hmm. like, so yeah. if you weren't there early, if you, yeah. if you didn't know where it was, like, I mean, I guess what I'm getting at, these were like super coveted, super <laughs> secret kinds of right. meetups and exchanges and marketplaces, because that was where yeah. you got your dope beats or not. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, the whole idea of, digging through the crates, right. right? That's where it comes from because that's what DJs would do on the weekends. They'd yeah. go and just dig through crates of random 
shops to find random music that no one else had or no right. one else had discovered and played in a different way you know um it reminds me of like de la i think de la soul was one of the first bands to like really get sued over a sample and that was by uh the turtles okay and i remember when that happened that was a big issue and like no one had ever really you know sued like that or whatever and um that was like that was a really big deal and that changed all of you know the way you could sample in the future, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the beginning, everyone sampled the hell out of everything and no one cared. But then all of a sudden, when you started getting lawsuits from these original bands, then musicians had to, you know, DJs and, and rap groups had to figure out, okay, how do we sample now without, you know? So I remember um, De La Soul, actually, it was such a big deal with them when that happened that later on, you know, and you know, not too long ago, actually, they ended up, recording their own album all live right so that they can sample from it on their next album after that that's badass so they just record their own music yeah. and then sample that well look you know? i remember you know being being from a musical family being from you know an area where or at least you know a family where music was practiced right so uh, my mom was a singer or my sister was a singer you know, several of our family members are musicians. I played uh, alto saxophone at a high level for years, yeah, uh, both in jazz and classical. And when hip hop comes along, right, mm -hmm. and you know, sampling and all of this, like no one understood or appreciated the artistry of sampling because they couldn't get past the fact that you didn't make that music, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And, it's, not, it's not real music. Well, it's not real music, right? Yeah. And of course, you know, there's there was a lot of controversy around that. And part of it, of course, like so much controversy, was rooted just in ignorance around why this art form exists to begin with, mm -hmm. right? Because now, so many years later, I can I know, for example, that so much of this artistry, so much of this creativity, so much of this self expression was born out of a vacuum. What I mean by that is, you know, so many of these folks didn't have the means to buy a thousand dollar saxophone and take lessons. Right, of course right? not. A lot of folks didn't have the means to buy a piano and go, whatever, yeah. right? So, but yet they're still musical. They're still yeah. artistic. They still have to express themselves. So what do you do? You mm -hmm. use the tools that you have. You use the, 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 materials that you have exactly right yep and you start you know cutting and pasting you just start mm -hmm. right you start mixing and matching you start painting with those tools and those colors and those materials and that's what and that's the art form right that's the yeah. art and so it was just a whole nother way of creating that had never at least to the extent that the status quo and yeah. the intelligentsia and the gatekeepers and the white executives that run the music industry right they had no no appreciation for and no clue about yeah because at the end of the day you know these are artists that wanted to express themselves totally yeah and and you know now it's like you and know now it's a fucking multi-billion dollar industry yeah and then not only that now you have quote unquote real music being made yeah where there's not one instrument that's actually used in the making of that whole album right right because it's all digital yep it's all you know you know slice you know about Slice? No, I don't know about Slice. So sl I just learned about Slice. Okay. So, okay. So you met Fish, right? Mike Herring, the guitar yeah, player? Yeah, okay. yeah. So Fish was telling me about this, right? Now, for our listeners, Fish is a good friend of the show, uh, professional guitarist, toured, you know, toured with Prince. He's toured with big acts for years and years. So he's the real deal, right? Yeah. When it comes to being a musician. And, you know, he and I were talking the other day about this and, you know, he was lamenting the current state of the music industry. He's a big hip hop guy. Like yeah. he's a core hip hop. I mean, he's worked with Nas and, you mm -hmm. know, but he was lamenting the current state of hip hop, right. And how everything sounds the same and there's no emotion and yeah. it's all fucking homogenized. And, and he's like, yeah, cause everybody's using slice. And I'm like, what the fuck is slice? Mm. And apparently slice is this website where you can just go and you just download Every uh, fucking sound, yeah. every beat, everything that you would need to right. cut and paste a song together. Yeah. And you don't need any musical chops. You don't need any 
expertise. You don't even, and if you, if you, you can, you can write lyrics, but if you're not a singer, you don't have a good voice. You can sing and record lyrics and then mix your voice oh, yeah. to make it sound okay. Well, so all of this stuff is just being, yeah, you know, contrived and produced digitally. Yeah. I'm not saying it is an art. I'm not saying that it does, there's not creativity there. I'm not saying there's a talent there. It's a totally different animal. Yeah. Right. But it's the way the industry is working right now. And if yeah. you are a musician like Fish, who has worked his whole life to hone his craft and yeah. be a master musician, it's an existential threat. Right. Yes, of course. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's, uh, it's funny because just yesterday, my son was going to a, a show right my son's a musician right like you know and yep. so he's always it was his show no 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 he he doesn't perform on stage and yeah, he's not okay. he's not at that yeah, level yeah, yeah. yet but he was going to see a show yeah okay. he was going to go see a show and i'm like oh where are you going he's like oh he named some theater that he didn't even know it was like he even told me the wrong theater actually <laughs> and um, i was like what is that called and then we yeah you know, i was like okay whatever he's like it's in la somewhere whatever i'm like well you know who, who, who's where exactly are you going yeah i just want to know who's going with all right. all right so he's doing that and then i said who's performing right <laughs> he said the funniest shit ever the, like like he, he just said it yeah. right but like he goes i'm not even gonna tell you because uh you, you're not even gonna know the name of this band like you know you, you have no idea about any of these bands you know so i'm not even gonna like yeah. like basically i'm not gonna waste you're my so time irrelevant dad yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like I'm not even gonna waste my fucking breath giving you the name of this band because you have no idea. I'm not idea. even gonna to show you the signs of respect by <laughs> answering your question because you yeah. so are, are so yeah. irrelevant. Yeah, like like he could have just said the name of the band and I would have been like, yeah, I never heard of it. But instead, he just he busted cited, your balls. Yeah, he busted my balls. You know, but but he did it. He wasn't doing it to be an asshole, and he wasn't no. doing it. He was just really honestly saying, you know what, Dad? Like like you you don't know what's up. <laughs> that was kind of what he was saying, and I was like, you're right. I I don't know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know but but going back to what we were talking about yeah. when i was a kid when i was into really hardcore into music and hip-hop and all that if my parents would have known about these bands they wouldn't have been cool right right like once your parents know about about this music like you know out i'm it's, done it's you're done you know when my when my mom got on facebook i was out yeah <laughs> Like I have some some family members who take their sons to concerts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because their sons love this band, mm -hmm. and 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 so do I. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, that's so fun. It's, it's, it's horrible. Like you're if you're you know fucking a uh, uh, seventeen year old kid is really into the exact same music that your fucking fifty year old ass is into, like one of you is full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably you because you're, you're probably not going to the hip shit you know then again there are some and i'm thinking about our basel i'm thinking of some moms that are so cool that they take their kids to shows and then twerk with them <laughs> well see that's what i'm saying and that that's cool that's that's they're they're, they're remaining relevant those parents <laughs> you know families that twerk together stay together right? <laughs> yeah but it's just like um and i have friends I will not mention any names. Come on, mention names. No, Come I will on. not. Come on. I will not. I will not. But I have some friends and they so they they work so hard to stay within the music, you know, no like they they still want to know about everything that's going on in music like yeah. like I they just want I, I think if if they if like like what my son told me, right? Mm -hmm. If one of if something somebody would have told them the exact same thing, like they'd have a heart attack and die, you know? Right. Because like staying hip on what's going on right now in music yeah. to some people is such a big deal that if they're out of that loop, they might as well be dead. Right. <laughs> you know, because then it says they're old. Yeah. And they just don't want to face the reality, you know? That's why I don't like going to Hollywood anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, but it's, it's, in, you know, speaking about music though, in particular, like yeah. one of the things that I've come to realize is that to find that cool dope shit these days, yeah. like, and maybe maybe this is old news now too, but yeah. like you got to be deep into SoundCloud. Like oh, yeah, you got to, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. some of these because okay, let's break it down, right? Right. Like as a rule, mass market artists, commercial artists, big artists, as a rule, mm. are not the cool cutting edge shit, right? right. Because right. they've already, oh sure, you know, Cardi B might have a hot track or whatever, right. but at the end of the day, like if you are. 16 mm -hmm. or 15 or 18 and you are into the cool hip shit right chances are it's underground it's independent it's right. like yep. no, you know yep and and as i understand it right a lot of these 
young independent artists are going going live straight mm-hmm. to the source via SoundCloud or some of these other platforms. Right. And so when I happen to hear artists like Billie Eilish talk about shit she's listening to and she's into, mm-hmm. she's nine times out of ten saying, oh, "I found this on SoundCloud. I found this on SoundCloud." Yeah. Now, yeah. Okay. If that if any of that is true then that means that I got to find my shit on SoundCloud. <laughs> I ain't got no time. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have fucking time to sort through. To navigate fucking it. Fucking navigate <laughs> SoundCloud. Yeah, I know. I mean, because as a rule, right, it's a basic bell curve. We know 80% of it's crap. By the way, by the way, Not Real Art is on SoundCloud. Yeah. yeah you, better, you better recognize. Yeah, you better right, recognize. Bitches. We on SoundCloud. Yeah, we, we on SoundCloud. <laughs> hey, by hey. the way, we, yeah. we, uh, I, I'm just going to say it right now. Yeah. We, we, cause I was going to say <laughs> the bell curve, like 80% of it's crap. Yeah. 12 of it is in, uh, 10% of it's inspired. 10% of it is genius. Guess which bracket we're in. Oh, hands down, <laughs> hands down crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. In the 80% pile, ladies and gentlemen, but you better subscribe. You better comment. You, know you, you better know, like, you know what? I just realized, dude, next time I'm going to come prepared with the rhyme. Okay. And I'm going to kick the rhyme right here on our podcast. Dude. And guess what? Hmm. I could say I'm a SoundCloud rapper. Dude, <laughs> I can honestly, with a straight face, <laughs> tell people <laughs> I am officially a SoundCloud rapper. Make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. I make have it to. happen. You know, you get hashtag goals. <laughs> hashtag dreams. <laughs> hashtag live your truth. Oh, man. Uh, That's crazy. I don't know, man. I mean, because, you know, because eventually it just boils down to the fact that, like, you don't have fucking time. No. To, like, and I need to, I, but I do like to know. Yeah. What's hip and cool. And, you know, so like, what are, what are those sources? You know, I men- mentioned Billie Eilish yeah. in particular because I didn't even know about her until mm-hmm. maybe a year and a half ago, a year ago, when I, or whenever she started uh, on having her show on Apple Radio. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? So like, I was checking out. I was like, wow, you know, this chick's like really smart and she's like playing some really cool shit. And then I found out she's like 15. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, but I mean, who are those tastemakers, right? That I can trust to be like, oh yeah, this is cool stuff. Now I'm old enough at 48 that I hear all kinds of influences in someone's music. Right. And for me, the fewer influences I hear, Mm -hmm. the more original the music. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. And so if I instantly hear, you know, they're biting or, or, or stealing from, you know, some other acts. Yeah. I'm just not that interested. Yeah. But if it's something totally interesting and new and fresh, like I'm down, but you know, who are those people that are going to sort through all that stuff? Right. Somebody like Billie Eilish, who a is a genius artist herself, 15 with all the time and you know, yeah. world to do this stuff and it be, see it's her job anyway. You know, I trust that right. source, you know, right. but, um, but you know, I mentioned Hollywood. It's like, yeah. It's like there was a time in my life where I knew where to go to get that drink. I knew where to go to get that good meal. I knew where to go, you know, that was fresh and new and hip and interesting. Right. <laughs> Not anymore. Well, also there's, there's levels now because, for example, you know, there's people who are into, you know, like mainstream hip hop, right? Yeah. Like whatever Power 106 is push, pushing out or yeah. whatever in your city and all that, right? And it makes me laugh when those people who are into that type of music think they're listening to like the newest shit. Right. Like that makes me laugh, you know, like these people have no idea, but anyways, but that's, that's, that's like one route, right? Like there's the, the, the mainstream of what's cool, right? Then the underground of what's cool is divided up because it's not just like, oh, who's, who's cool right now that I don't know about. No, it's, it's actually like, who's cool right now in electronic music who's cool right now um uh, you know as a lyricist or 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 you know underground hip-hop act who's cool right now in the punk who's cool right now like there's so many different layers stages so i think what's interesting now is that you can have people who are like have really good followings really well known throughout the country throughout the world even that no one else is going to pick up on because you're not in that lane. Right. You know? And I think that's cool. I, I, I think that's, I, you know, like the, the time of fucking Michael Jackson is over. You know, when, when like there was one rock star that everyone loved. Yeah. And like that was it, you know? Yeah. Like that's long gone. I think it's so micro right now. Mm-hmm. And um, so that, going back to what my son said, he's right. I'm not going to know who the hell he's into or what he likes or, 
you know and and you know it's funny because sometimes i'll discover a musician you know wherever you know on on freaking uh not on soundcloud because i don't listen to soundcloud but uh you know wherever on on on, on the on what is that pandora or yeah, right, fucking right. Spotify, spotify or something right. and i'll see a band or a music or a, a song right. usually it's a song right and i'm like this is a cool song let me check out the rest of this person's mm -hmm. you know music and i go on youtube i see some a video and then i go and they're, they're like a million followers already yeah. and i right. and i'm like uh, you know it's, so it's new. like it's like you're it's late like, to the game so I, my, my usual discovery of people is after they have a million people. So after a million people have heard it, right. I'll pro I'm, I'm on it that comes next. on your radar. Yeah. Then it comes on my radar. Right. 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 So I'm never going to be discovering anyone less than a million followers already. You no. know, that's the reality, you know, but, uh, some of these people, you know, they only have, you know, when, when, for example, going back to your thing about, uh, grunge and all that, like I was at, you know, when I went to LMU for college, mm -hmm. our radio station, KXLU is like fucking one of the top stations in LA for anyone who knows anything about music. It's always been still like, to this day. Still to this day. It's like, it's a, you know, it's a, it's one what, of the, what, what are the numbers? KXLU 80. What is it? Uh, is it 89.9? Is that right? Well, that's KCRW. That's KCRW. So 90. Fuck. I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know. It's, okay. a, it's, it's like 90. It's a, right. I don't, I shouldn't know, but I don't know. But KXLU was, old. yeah. Yeah. Memory shot. Yeah. I just go to KXLU dot com no so um but i remember like you know anyone who was into the underground shit the newest shit you know this is pre-internet right sure so like and, and you can only there was only you know college stations right it only has a certain radius right you can't get it everywhere in la yeah so when you were in a certain part of town you could listen to it right and so my 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 roommate in my my sophomore year i guess my roommate was was a dj there he had like the 3 a.m spot like every night so i would go with him just hang out and while he's doing his show i'm in the other room literally just pulling vinyl off you know and they would always have a new, like like every week he, there'd be a stack of the new shit like literally people would just bring the new shit right. and you know uh, record promoters and and you know you open it up and it says promo only and right. you know this and that and you're not like, for oh, commercial yeah. uh, resale so the first time i ever heard nirvana was there at KXLU, right. you know? Right. And because my friend who had the show turned me on to them. He yeah. was like, dude, this just came in. This is fucking banned from Seattle. This is like, what, 90, I guess 92, 93? It was like Bleach? Was it was the album Bleach or was it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but I heard it yeah. and I was like, holy shit. You know, uh, this is fucking cool. Yeah. This is different, you know? So, uh, you know, but that's the way you experienced it back then, you know? It was just, there wasn't this fucking internet, you know? Right. Now it's like, oh my God, where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you start? You know, but you know, kids now they they know how to navigate, I think, or maybe they don't. I don't know, but it's just it's just an inter interesting world now. Yeah, man, it, it's <laughs> interesting. All right, I, I but I you know it's fascinating too because it feels like to the extent right that white guys feel like rock music, yeah, lost its way or got right. like whatever. Yeah. Plus it's 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 pure center or whatever. I'm noticing that a lot of the hip hop OGs now are pissed off oh, yeah. about the current state of hip hop. Oh yeah. Well, what I, the fuck happened to hip hop? Oh that's that's been going on for years now. I, you know, um yeah. I hate I hate the new shit. Like there's since when? Like what year did you start noticing like hip hop ain't what it used to be? I, I would say I would say since Dr. Dre the Chronic. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like that's that going was, back. Yeah, but I think that's like, like after that, you know, everything started getting fucked up, I thought, you okay. know, like it, everything in the 2000s, I would say there's very little stuff that I really like from the year, from the 2000s on, you know? Right. But okay. So in the 2000s, mm -hmm. we had like, and you're talking about the aughts, right? So 2000 and 2010, yeah. 2010, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what dropped in those years i mean the I good know. stuff i mean I like jay-z dropped a few i hate jay-z you hate jay-z well, there yeah. you go yeah. okay so talk a little bit about like what you hated and maybe what you liked if anything okay what, what i loved about hip-hop was that it was original yeah and there was an artistry to the voice an artistry to the lyrics like they meant something right yes. and it was something that i couldn't do like if i could rap your lyrics they, I think you sucked because I shouldn't be able to do that. Right. Like you're a it should fucking, be so original yo, that only you can do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like there's no way I could do it. 
what I started like when, like yeah like let's talk about like Jay Z for example like to me that was so like uh boring shit um fucking whack beats all that kind of stuff like I just I just not at all into it you know and it's funny because even people you know talk about Biggie and Tupac and you know Tupac n- never a real big fan of Tupac you know like mm-hmm. it was he had a couple songs here and there whatever but you know whatever Biggie was probably better than Tupac in my mind, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't put Biggie in the top fucking okay. 10 of anything. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. yeah. and, 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 you know, it's like, but that to me, so to me, that was like the next generation that I'm okay. already, I'm 2.0. already, yeah, to me. Right. And so you're, so 1.0 is in your mind, core top original artists. Cause like when people say like old school, yeah, old right? school, old school right. hip hop. Yeah. Well, to me, what old school hip hop right, is, right. is like 79, 1980. Okay. You know, like shit that came out then. All right. So who are your top three hip hop artists of all time? Chuck D, Karis One, and Rakim. That's it. Like I, and, you know, there could be a battle about everything else. Right. My top 10, whatever, right. you can battle all day long. But to right. me, that was like, right. in terms of what they were talking about, in terms of how original their voice yeah. was. Because one of the, okay, look, this is coming from me, right? Yeah. So my assessment of what it was right like there was a point in time where the lyrics became trite and superficial right yeah 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 right yeah yeah. where the lyrics began to celebrate materialism and capitalism and versus lyrics that celebrated humanity or social justice or uh poetry or whatever like i don't know i think there was a richness in a in a in a and a complexity yeah. to the lyrics and the words and the messaging yeah. of the earlier stuff. But there was, and I, and I don't know what the dates were, but yeah. like, I just remember thinking like, wow, this music's really becoming like kind of superficial. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I just, I just rattled off, you know, three of my favorite all timers. If any of those three put out an album today, I probably wouldn't listen to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I think they're past their prime. Sure. You know? Right. And that's another thing that kind of like, it's, it's kind of sad and, and kind of scary at the same time because it's like they, when they were at their prime, like, fuck, to me, they're fire. They're like, you know, there's nothing better than, they can never get better than that. You know, they're so good that now their new stuff doesn't, it can't even come close, you know? And I don't know why that is, you know? And I think it's, I think it's when you, uh, part of a hip hop or any, any new music genre or even art genre, like when you're young, you fucking just want it more and you're yeah. just, you know, willing to take more cha- chances mm-hmm. and whatever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. because as you become older, you just become more complacent with your shit, you know, I don't know. And, and a, a lot that's a, a, from the old timers mm-hmm. that are doing music now, that's what I feel mm-hmm. from them, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I just feel like, uh, they're just trying too hard or they're right. just, they've given up on certain aspects of their pr- production and then that that's why I'm not into those guys anymore. So I'd rather just stick with like the, you know, what I used to listen to and just, right. just, just play that, you know, the original, the original to me, that's like yeah. you, the, the, the golden age for me. But was the one best. has to wonder like one of about the means of distribution, yeah. right? The means of delivery, yeah. right? Because back in the day, there were very limited means of distribution. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now we have streaming. Mm-hmm. So we have unlimited means of distribution, right? Right. So I wonder to what extent streaming caused the bar to lower. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because now in digital technology, the unintended consequence of giving everybody access, giving yeah. everybody the tools is that, you know, yeah. not everybody's great. Most of it's going to be shit. And, but yeah, at the same time, you have all these channels that need to be filled, yeah. you know, all these pipes that need water. And so there's a bunch of fluid pumping through it, but right. not all of it's drinkable. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know how they say, like, if, if it was easy, everyone, would, everyone yeah, right, could do it. Right. Well, it is easy now. and Everyone can do it. Great point. <laughs> so, so that's what you had all, you know, all this shit that came out with, like, remember the mumble rap right. and like all this fucking, you know, like, uh, you know what, though? this is giving me hope. Is it? I may actually also yeah. be able to come out as a rapper. Cause if, yeah, you, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, I know I'm going to suck, but apparently sucking is like hot right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what's what it is, you know. Up up is down and down is up right now. I don't know, but I mean what you were talking about in terms of those artists like maybe not or like being past their prime. 
I mean, it's kind of like muscles, right? Like if you don't yeah. exercise them, right, they atrophy, right? I mean, that's part of it. But also, I think there's different times and, and eras for stuff. Yeah. You know, like you know, Public Enemy, for example. When you heard that shit, it fucking pumped you up. Yeah. Like, you know, fight the power. Right. Right. That's what was going yeah. on back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even though now, fight the power would be a great fucking message. That's not what people are are. Oh, you know, that's not what they're listening to. That's right. not what, you know. And um, so I think, you know, there's, there's, there's different times for different art, you know. Mm -hmm. And art hits because of the times, you know. It, you, can't, you can't just grab a song and just drop it a few, a few decades later and hope that it still works in right. that era. And, and it might. Sometimes, you know, music is cyclical, just like time is cyclical. Sometimes it does work, but it's not just random. I think there has to be like that appetite for it. Um, what's really interesting is my daughter, right? She, um, she got a, a record player, right? And she goes, dad, I need something to hold my vinyls, my vinyls. <laughs> so she's like, can you bring me a crate or my vinyls? Right? Love it. Love it. So then I said, oh, you got vinyls? She goes, yeah, we just wanted to go buy us some right now, right? So she, she, she's in her room and we hear the music coming out, right? And me and my wife are on the table and she's playing song. It's Stevie Nicks. My daughter's listening to Stevie Nicks. And I'm like, huh, oh, you're into Stevie Nicks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Stevie Nicks, right? And I go, wow. So do you have the whole album? She goes, no, this is a mixed vinyl. <laughs> so it's, she goes, it's a bunch of songs by a bunch of old groups. <laughs> and it was. She's not wrong. I mean, was, <laughs> then, then, then the next song was Hall and Oates. Right. And then, you know, right. and I was like, a oh, mixed vinyl. It was a mixed That's vinyl. Interesting. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> but now there's mixed vinyl. So it's funny because now my daughter's all into, you know. Vinyl. Vinyl. But, but see, the vi if the vinyl had uh, Drake, it wouldn't be vinyl. Because vinyl, it, you're talking about a retro. Oh, sure. Right? It's retro shit. Yeah, it's retro shit. So if you're listening to vinyl, you're listening vintage to the shit. vintage yeah. shit. Right, right, right. Right? It, it, you know so a drake album or drake vinyl would just be a record it would yeah it wouldn't you know like she it, will she probably wouldn't even buy it no you will she's not gonna right, buy it right, right right you know and besides her record player sounds like shit all right remember those little record players you used to buy oh, like yeah. those portable ones yeah. okay well that's the thing now right people right. are buying those yeah. and, but supposedly now they're 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 bluetooth now and everything oh, okay. and so you could play other music right okay but it sounds like shit yeah you know right and like i'm like no when you had vinyl you had to get some badass speakers with it. You know, you had to fucking put, turn, you know, your turntable had to hook up with the fucking, you know, it had a boom, you know, like they're missing that whole part. Yeah, they just think it's, it's about playing on the, no, no, no. It's not just playing on the vinyl. <laughs> I used to know this guy who had a wholesale business out of his basement. Yeah. Which sounds shady as shit. I know, right. but uh, it was pretty legit and he would sell stereo equipment out of his house mm -hmm. you know and he had like a showroom or whatever <clears throat> and i knew people that used to like you i'd go to these people's houses and they'd have these killer stereos I'd be like, wow, yeah it's amazing like where'd yeah. you get that and they would be like oh i got it from old boy you know? <laughs> and i'll never forget the day like i had <laughs> enough money yeah saved up to go buy something from him you know right, and right. you like go walk down his basement and it's just like <laughs> yeah. high tech fucking stereo shit yeah and he had it all but you're yeah. right you had to have it all you had to have like it was the record player yeah which was top whatever you know and right. he had multiple record players yeah with needles like i mean you know what needle oh, yeah. you're gonna oh, get yeah. and of like course. all that stuff yeah and then of course then you had the the receiver and then right. you make cassette player and are you gonna get a double <laughs> cassette and you know do you remember oh this is, this is awesome <laughs> Do you remember when you finally had like a good stereo in your car? Yeah. Right? And it had an equalizer. Oh shit. Dude. And you had to fuck with the are equalizer you on your Are you kidding me? Right? No, you were you made it <laughs> right? at that point. Oh man, if you if you got in a car and the guy didn't have an equalizer, you're like fucking yeah. this guy's loser. whack. Fucking yeah. loser. You know? <laughs> Although, truth of the matter is, in full confession here, my first car. Yeah. Which was a 1976 Chevy Malibu Classic. Yeah. Okay. I was 16. And my dad bought it for 800 bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Didn't have stereo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, yeah, what, do you, yeah. what do you expect for 800 bucks? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. But I had a boom box. Bo yeah. Yeah. You had in it in the, the passenger <laughs> seat. Sure. You know? Of course. Yeah. 
but it's just funny. But it had an equalizer. Yeah. So you always had to have the equalizer, yeah. right? Yeah. And guess what? To this day, I don't know how to fucking use an equalizer. <laughs> Like right. I don't, I don't know which button has to go up as long as the fucking colors are moving up and down and there's as like red, it looks cool it's like and red it's and green decent. and shit's moving. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, that's my fucking equalizer. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Kids, kids will never know about the equalizer. Fucking equalizer, man. <laughs> shit, that was some fucking real shit, man. <laughs> so funny. Oh man, we were we were so badass. <laughs> Music was. I mean, you know, I I don't know that kids these days. Obviously, I have no clue these days, like how they relate to music the way we relate to music. Because, you know, music now is like air, right? Because of streaming, it's yeah. like everywhere, all the time, at your fingertips. Yeah. Whereas, like for us, you had to work to get your music. <clears throat> right. You know, like sure you could turn on the radio, but you know, well, it's 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 changed because um, I think kids now listen to way more music than we used to listen to. Sure. Way more music. Wait, but way, way more different. You, you, when you say way more, do you mean more different, uh, different genres or? No, 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 no. no like hours. Hours, time. 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 Volume. Because for example, kids are always with their earphones now. Yeah. You know? So you, you, it, I think there was a shift at one point, right? When, remember you used to watch movies and, you know, there was a score going on in the background oh, of the yeah, movie, right. right? Yeah, yeah, Or a soundtrack going on, right? Mm -hmm. Every kid now has a score and a soundtrack every day, if you think about it, sure. right? So like my son, my, my three kids are walking around the house doing nothing or whatever, mm -hmm. but they all have their own headphones listening to their own music. So just think of how different each of their experience is just doing the same thing around the house, you know, one day, right. let alone right. walking around, uh, you know, going to somewhere, yeah. driving, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And every time they get in their car, you know, all three of them, right. if they're going to drive, they figure out the music first and you know all that and but it's it's like they now it's it's almost like if they don't have the music on at some point like they're not living like they're not they're not really being who they want to be you know like they have to have a soundtrack sure. for everything they do sure well i mean you're hitting on something that's a like a really interesting bigger conversation about how we can now all go into our own little bubbles totally exactly you know we don't yeah, have to talk yeah. to each other we don't nope. have to interact and uh is that a good thing bad thing i don't know you know but yeah. it's it's a it's a real thing <laughs> yeah yeah and fascinating to think about you know i uh i find i go through phases where in the car yeah i just you know like i'll go through like a couple of days where i just refuse to put the radio on and i'm trying to unplug just enjoy the unplug <laughs> dude it's the worst it's the worst it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. It sucks. you're like I hate this, when i do that you're like i'm driving in la the worst place to drive <laughs> with anywhere no <laughs> with no music. <laughs> then again, I am, you know, high because I've stopped by the <laughs> dispensary. And <laughs> is, it, is it possible to be high and not listen to music? <laughs> That's another question. Oh, my God. The questions for another day. Yeah. Man one. Great to see you, my friend. Yep. You too. Thanks sourdough. for hanging out. And uh, we'll uh, keep, you know, solving the world's problems in our next episode. <laughs> For our uh, listeners and uh, fans and friends out there, be sure to uh, like this episode and comment. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And share it. Let people know. Fuck yeah, man. Spread the word. Jesus. <laughs> Unfortunately, we live in a world now where, you know, if you don't have like real like social media numbers, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, you know, we want to matter. So get those numbers up, bitches. Yeah. I need to pay for these mics. We love you. Come on. Love us. Love us hard. We like it hard. <laughs> Man one, you're the best. Peace out. All right. Peace.